What is the connection between COVID-19 and other pandemics? If there is one thing we all are going to remember in our life is the COVID-19 and the horrible experiences we all had firsthand. From stocking food and essentials to the inability to not be able to see our loved ones for months due to travel restrictions. Many personal horrifying experiences like friends and loved ones dying in front of our eyes and hearing them dead over a phone call are going to remain in our memories long after the pandemic finds its way out. How big is this pandemic when compared to the other pandemics the world had seen in recorded history? The question is, why recorded history? Because there had been even more horrifying things that happened in the past. It's just that we don't know exactly how it happened. We have a fair amount of historical records for circa 5,000 years only. Humans have been here for 50 lakhs years and the earth formed about 450 crore years back. We, the humans, are negligible on the face of the earth. It looks like this. We have started to exist just about one ninth of the planet earth existence. We have a fair amount of history recorded only for about one oblique one thousand of human existence on this planet. Well, let us get back to the pandemics we wanted to talk about. But first, let's talk about the world's deadliest pandemics. The first one was a Black Death, then Plague of Justinian, Smallpox, Antonine Plague, Spanish Flu, the Third Plague, HIV AIDS, and then COVID-19. If we talk about Antonine Plague, which came under 165-180 AD. Epidemics were common in an ancient times, but the first known pandemic, the Antonine Plague, impacted the Roman Empire. The Antonine Plague is also named after a physician who called the spreading disease a plague, as opposed to smallpox and other diseases people had called it then. The physician is Galen, and so the pandemic is called as Plague of Galen as well. Much of our knowledge of early medicine comes from Galen's writings. Aside from his writings on medicine, he wrote extensively on language, logic, psychology, ethics, and even moral philosophy. Regrettably, most of his works no longer exist or survive only in fragments. He lost many of his writings, instruments, and medicines in a storeroom fire in 192 CE. To Galen, the body was an orderly construct of nature. Galen recommended exercise, a balanced diet, good hygiene, and bathing. It's been about 2000 years and the formula for good health hasn't changed a lot. The Antonine Plague lasted for 15 years from 165 to 180 AD. Estimates of the fatalities from the pandemic range from 2% to 33% of the Roman Empire's population, with deaths between 15 lakhs and 2.5 crores. It's like one out of three people died in that pandemic. To some historians, the plague was the beginning of the decline of the great Roman Empire. Now let's talk about the plague of Justinian, which was there in 541 to 549. Justinian plague affected the entire Mediterranean basin, Europe, and took about 20% of the world's population then, which is one out of every five people who died. Imagine. This plague was caused by a bacteria called Yersinia pestis. The very same bacteria is going to take a much bigger part of the world's population in another 800 years or so. The plague appears to have started in Lower Egypt in about 541 and then spread across the Mediterranean in the ships that transported grain to the center of the empire. The first few cases appeared in Constantinople in the spring of 542. The disease soon took hold and raged for four months. Justinians ordered vast pits to be dug to dispose the rotting corpses when these overflowed bodies were stuffed into towers of the city. With quicklime poured over them to speed up decomposition or they were loaded onto ships that were pushed out in the sea of Marmara and set alight. Constantinople came to a standstill. Food started to run out and law and order broke down. At its height, perhaps as many as 10,000 people a day were dying in Constantinople. 
by the time the plague had run its course nearly half the city's population was dead and at the end of the plague one out of two people died now looking at black death the deadliest one is the black death the pandemic that ravaged europe for five years between 1347 and then 1351 taking a proportionately greater toll on life than any other known epidemic or war up to that time it's been said that more than 50% of humans at that time had been wiped off by the black death it took another 200 years for europe's population to return to pre black numbers it has also been said that a town crier used to call for the families of victims of the black death to bring out your dead for mass burial The estimated number of deaths ranges from 7.5 crores to 20 crores. The world population at that time was 39 crores. In other words, the world population had become halved during this pandemic. The fourth one is smallpox 1500. Genetic evidence suggests that the smallpox virus emerged 3000 to 4000 years ago. The documented case of smallpox started in 1520 in mexico in the next 8 years it took 2 lakh people there took 50 crores people in its final 100 years of existence in may 1980 the world health assembly the governing body of the world health organization officially certified the global elimination of smallpox the first ever eradication of a disease in human history it further recommended that all countries cease vaccination or laboratory should destroy their remaining stocks or transfer them to two certified high security laboratories in moscow which was state research center of virology and biotechnology or the centers for disease control and prevention cdc in atlanta these are the only two known places that still hold samples of the variola viruses for research purposes a world famous music composer got affected by smallpox and got recovered from it Of course, he lived to deliver some of the masterpieces in music after hundreds of years. Even today, music students refer to his work. Well, who is he? Now talking about the third plague, which came in 1850. The striking thing about this pandemic is that two third of the death happened in India, when India was under British colonial rule. In total, 1.5 crore people died in this pandemic worldwide. According to WHO the pandemic was considered active until 1960 when worldwide casualties dropped to 200 per year what the british did to india demands a series of videos we'll publish one soon now let's look at spanish flu spanish flu came in 1919 there's a similarity between the spanish flu and the first known pandemic in 200 AD and to nine plague both took around 2.5% of the population in their respective times only that spanish flu took away 4.50 crore people and to nine took away 50 lakhs people this pandemic broke out near the end of world war 1 another important aspect of this pandemic is the name spanish flu is a misnomer the first reported case was in kansas usa Due to the war censorship was active to maintain morale the news was suppressed. Neutral Spain freely reported the outbreak creating the false impression of Spain as the epicenter thus getting the name and about 1/4 of the total death was from India. And now let's talk about HIV which emerged in 1981. The first case of HIV was reported in 1981. and since then there are over 3.6 crore people who have died of hiv unlike any other pandemic we have seen hiv is not contagious which means you have relatively more control over its transmission and spread it took less than 1% of the population but continues to take lives still today aids is the most advanced stage of hiv infection People who take HIV medicine and reach an undetectable viral load can stay healthy and will not progress to AIDS. HIV disproportionately impacts low and middle income countries of the 3.3 crore people diagnosed with HIV around the world. Approximately 65% are in sub-Saharan African countries and 15% are in South Asia and Southeast Asia. 
the remaining 20% is spread over the rest of the world. As you can guess, HIV directly correlates with the economic conditions of a country more than any other factor. Unlike the above pandemics, HIV is an ongoing epidemic, or you can also call it as endemic. Now let's talk about the COVID-19. Of all the pandemics we have known, there is one thing we all going to remember for the rest of our life is COVID-19. And the kind of horrible experiences we all had firsthand with our neighbors, relatives and close friends. During COVID-19, 66.67 crore people were affected to date by COVID-19 and had taken the lives of 67.22 lakhs worldwide. In India, 4.46 crore people have been affected to date and taken the lives of around 5.30 lakhs. The first case was from Wuhan, China. It's been more than three years and the pandemic continues till date. If we take the percentage of death rate in proportion to the world population, this is the least killing pandemic at a less than 0.1%, the lowest of all the pandemics. But COVID will be the most known among people thanks to the connected world we are living in today. If you're watching this, you should be happy for many reasons. We are a video marketing firm. We develop content and build video channels for brands. Even when you subscribe to our channel, the chance of you getting our next video is slim. The only way to get it for sure is by hitting the bell icon while subscribing. Well, if you remember we asked a question in between that who was the music composer who survived smallpox. So the composer who got affected by smallpox and survived was the great Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart.